So uh, good morning, everyone. Um, today we're going to continue the uh, BIM 101 series, as Holly said before, with uh, BIM 401 model-based scheduling. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about activity-based scheduling, then introduce the concept of flow line and how it can be used during pre-construction and during construction. And finally, we'll discuss the difference between uh, 4D animations and uh, true 4D construction simulation. I'm going to also go back and forth between uh, slides and uh, the software itself, so um, I'll, I'll be switching back and forth during the course. So we were thinking about polling the audience about how often pre-construction schedules are used on site by the superintendent, but uh, we, we know the answer, and uh, based on the discussions with the, many of our clients, you know, typically they don't necessarily use the same schedule during construction that they create during pre-construction. Typically, the schedule created during pre-construction is for selling the project, and eventually it, it, it just becomes wallpaper in the trailer. Uh, Activity-based schedules are created based on subjective information, and uh, they can become complex pretty fast because of the number of activities and links that you uh, put in, into an activity-based schedule. Um, it's the industry standard, however, but um, it's still not used to control the project. Uh, GAN charts are difficult to use in the field for monitoring construction. Typically, the schedule is updated once a month to record what happened in the past, as opposed to help you forecast where problems might occur in the future. Uh, it can't really show you efficiently starts and stops. It can't really show you impact of delays. So site monitoring becomes, becomes pretty hard, and um, the, you don't necessarily know every single day that the project is under control or if it's, if it's out of control. So Flowline is actually not something that is new. It's, um, it's being used uh, on building the Empire State Building. Uh, the Empire State Building was built in just a little over one year. Uh, the builders had to manage thousands of people on a very tight site. Uh, they basically drew Flowline on the, a paper with pencil. It helped them ensure continuous flow and efficiently utilize uh, the tight site and locations during construction. So, so how did they do it? What was uh, the concept behind it? As we said earlier, Gantt charts are, are very useful. Um, you know, they're easy to read. However, they're pretty hard to manipulate. They show tasks, uh, activities as function of time. They can be pretty informative but they're not showing a lot of information that's critical to the success of a construction project. They're not, they don't show locations. For example, uh, they show locations only in the name of the task, if you include it in there, or if you create your own location breakdown structure coding system and you include it as a field in your Gantt chart schedule. It doesn't show continuity of tasks, does not allow you to visualize dependencies, and uh, optimize the movement of crews. Using Flowline, however, you'll be able to see all that in just one single view. On the top, it, it shows a calendar, and on the left side, it shows a location. So in this case, you have one, two, three, four, five floors. And then you can see how crews pass through these locations with just represented by a, a simple line. It's easy, it's easy to see where certain crews are at what point in time. It's easy to see how far they are, are apart in terms of locations. And you can also see time and location lag between two locations and two crews very, very easily. You can also use this view to um, analyze productivity and um, see what areas of the project are being utilized and what areas of the project are being underutilized. The flow line view is also, um, it also can be displayed in a Gantt chart view. So the two are compatible. They're, it's not just that you're working in a flow line view or in a Gantt chart view. You can work in both at the same time. But as you can see, the number of activities that you have to manipulate in a flow line view are a lot less compared to what you have in the Gantt chart view. 
In a Gantt chart view, for every single location in an activity-based schedule, you'd have to create a task and activity. In this case, you have um, plaster, plastering um, for drywall on the uh, first floor, second floor, et cetera, up to the eighth floor. Every single activity of drywall for each location is a different bar in the Gantt chart view. In the floor line view, however, you only have one line that represents one crew, the drywall crew, across several locations. So you have, instead of eight tasks, you own eight tasks, you only have one that you will need to manipulate and, um, and, then, uh, and then define. You also, with this technology, reduce the number of links that you embed into the program, into the schedule, because the location sequence, the location logic, is automatically generated by control by the flow line view. The continuity of locations is ensured by you know, having a continuous line here without any uh, break in the line. And the logic is automatically handled by the program. So you only need to take care of predecessor and successor activities, so the predecessor and successor links, which reduces the number of links uh, by an order of magnitude and helps you manipulate and resequence the schedule as many times as you need to during the pre-construction process. So line of balance is really, it, it, it means the ability to graphically display tasks and locations in one simple view, as opposed to just an activity-based schedule where you don't have locations represented automatically. And having location added as an additional dimension provides you a lot of benefit. It increases the power of control for the planner, creates a deeper understanding of the relationship between tasks, and the planner can see what's going on in the schedule at a glance rather than having to spend a lot of time investigating multiple pages of uh, printouts. You can also then start using the flow line schedule to start optimizing the way you use locations and optimize the, the way crews progress through different locations in the, in the project. When you look at a Gantt chart schedule and we just take these three activities, transform them into a flow line, you can see that the task in the middle has a uh, lower productivity and a slower utilization of locations than the two activities, the beginning at the end. By synchronizing the production rate and utilizing locations at the same pace, our customers experienced approximately 10% compression of the schedule. With this, you can also increase the level of detail of the schedule because you can in include more information in the schedule without actually increasing risk. So by using this additional dimension, locations together with productivity, you have the ability to optimize the schedule and compress it by at least 10% uh, on an average basis. So let me show you how uh, this actually uh, works in uh, inside control. Let me just switch to uh, control quickly. And um, when I create and when I look at control first, I can create locations. I don't necessarily need to start with a model. I can just start with my control software and create 10 floors, 10 locations. So now I have 10 floors here, and I can start adding tasks by just uh, drawing lines in the software. So I can draw a line for a, a rebar crew I can draw another line for a form crew, and I can draw a third line for a concrete crew. 